guys, welcome to the channel and our very first beauty video. Today I'm doing a get ready with me for just a day where I want to feel put together. I'm just working from home today, but I want to feel put together and glowing and fresh. So if you want to learn how to get this look, please keep watching. Okay, so let's start with skin. Now I will do a separate skincare video for you, but I thought I'd just touch on I guess what I do to prep my skin once I've washed my face or come out of the shower. So the first thing I like to do is use a toner. Now the toner I use is the Ola Henriksen Dark Spot Toner. It's great, especially if you have hyperpigmentation anywhere on your face, but I will say you need to, I guess, go a little extra on the SPF if you do use this product. I've heard that it does lift off something that makes you more prone to burning in the sun so do keep that in mind but it's a great product this one my skin type is a combination oily skin type i get quite dry in the mornings around the edges especially and any product that i put on my face just gets absorbed immediately and i do keep quite dry however as the day goes on i get pretty oily um, especially down the T-zone, on top of the cheekbones and the forehead. Um, and a product I like to use under my moisturizer, just balance it all out. So deal with the dryness, but then also deal with the oiliness throughout the day is this Fishy product. It's a serum. It's a fortifying and plumping daily booster. And it's great. I love this product. Unfortunately, you can't find this product in Australia. I pick it up. From Boots, when I'm in London, I usually pick up four bottles at a time. And if I know someone's coming from London, I'll ask them to pick up some bottles. But it really just balances out my skin and really preps it well for my moisturizer, keeps it really light. It's extremely re refreshing when I pop it on. So on top of my boosting serum, I use the Ola Henriksen Sea Rush Brightening Gel Cream. Now I find really thick creams hard to absorb into my skin and they sort of sit on the top layer which means parts of my face keep dry but then parts of my face get really oily because it's like sitting on top whereas this gel cream absorbs really quite well um, and it preps my skin perfectly for when I want to apply makeup on top because I do not use a primer as it stands currently. So the final sort of skincare prep product I go in with is the Ola Henriksen Banana Bright Eye Cream. It's great. I do feel like it brightens up my under eyes. I apply it underneath, on top of my eyelid, and anything spare I have, I pop on my smile lines, because why not? I'm just gonna pop on my lip balm quickly. This is the Sol de Janeiro Brazilian Kiss Lip Butter, and it is beautiful. I love this product, especially because it smells like buttered popcorn, which is a plus first thing in the morning. It's so lovely. But secondly, it's not overly greasy, but also absorbs into the lips really nice and preps it for any lipstick, especially if I'm going to wear a matte lipstick. Okay, so now foundation or tinted moisturizer. Now we have two options here. Because we are going in with more of a get myself together working from home type makeup. So something really quite light, natural and fresh. I will go ahead with a tinted moisturizer, I think. Um, one of my favorites is Share the Base by Lara Bingle. This one's in caramel and it has SPF 15 in it too, which is fabulous and great if you're going to the beach or running errands. So I'm just gonna pop this on the back of my hand. A decent pump again this colors in caramel the shade so I'm just gonna grab my beauty blender here and apply the product because it is a moisturizer we want to work pretty quickly if not it'll all get absorbed into the sponge if you do prefer to use a brush for this um, I don't blame you it's probably a better option but I just love the the coolness and the moisture that the Beauty Blender provides with the makeup, it feels a lot more natural, for me at least. Now as we can see, this product isn't offering much in the way of coverage, but what it will do 
is it provides an even base so you know removes any discoloring so that you can then go in with your concealer and spot conceal and work under your eyes as well I just love how light it is and fresh and once we dab that beauty blender onto the product on top of your hand it'll obviously be a lot of product on there so what I like to do is actually dab it all around the face and then work it in after that on top so there's not a lot of deposit of product in one area okay so we've got our tinted moisturizer on I'm now going to go in with a concealer and the concealer I'm going to use today is the Born This Way concealer in medium um, it's great it's not overly thick and creamy um, doesn't offer I guess maximum coverage for a concealer but offers enough coverage but also keeps your skin looking quite dewy which I love on top of a tinted moisturizer I'm not sure if we got putting on the concealer part the camera did stop recording but I've just popped some concealer under the eyes and now I'm going in and covering any blemishes that I have and I do from my monthly flare-up so we'll just cover those up And you can pop some down your nose too. Okay, so back in with that beauty blender and we're just going to blend that out. I'm dabbing here. As we can see, it's offering coverage and brightening, but also remains quite natural, which is nice. Okay, so now that we have our concealer all blended out, I'm going to go in with um, a bit of powder just to powder the T-zone, but also where I'm going to apply powdered bronzer. I'm going to use the Chanel Healthy Glow Sheer Powder, and I've had this for ages. I love it. It smells like rose it's really lovely actually and I'm just gonna get this on a powder slash highlighting brush this one's quite small it's by Mecca Cosmetica tap off the excess I'm just gonna take it under the eyes this one's a bit dark for me now under the eyes t-zone down the nose my cheeks where the cheek products are going to go and maybe on my chin now that the powder is done I'm going to go in with my brows now with my brows I like to keep it quite natural and simple looking my brows throughout my life have gone through an entire journey I think I've gone through every brow um, trend there has been but now we land here with these brows but I'm lucky they're quite thick and full so I don't need to do much to them okay so I'm gonna brush my brows up with a spoolie and we're gonna go in with the NYX eyebrow marker now I think this may be discontinued but most brands now do a brow marker I just find it a really easy way to apply brow strokes so hair strokes onto your brow and it's really easy to blend out as well so I'm going to start in the middle draw some hair stroke lines vertically and then draw them outwards as we get to the tip We can see there that it creates a really quite natural brow. So I'm just going to get that spoolie again and I'm going to brush it out upwards just to really blend in those lines a little bit. And that's one brow done. Now that our brows are done, I'm going to go in with eyeshadow for the eyes. I like to start the eyes with the same bronzer that I'm using on my cheekbones 
in the socket of the eye, um, just to blend in the warmth, but also just to create a bit of definition. I'm going in with the Fenty Beauty Instant Warmth Bronzer, and this one's in Private Island. I love this bronzer. It's got the slightest shimmer, but it feels mostly matte. So I'm gonna take it on a, a soft blender brush or a definer brush. This one is actually by Sports Girl, with, which is a clothing brand, an accessories brand in Australia, but really you can use any blending brush. And I'm just gonna take that in the crease of the eye and blend upwards. But as soon as I picked up the product, really starting on the edge of the eye in the, in the crease, creating that definition and then blending upwards. So now that we've contoured the eye, I'm gonna go in with eyeshadow. And my favorite sort of nude eyeshadow would be Mac Saddle. So it's a matte shade and it's a nice deep color, as you can see here. It's really, it's really quite good for shaping the eye, but also providing that warmth and definition, and I love it. So I'm just gonna apply it with a MAC 217 brush. And we're gonna start on the corner of, the outer corner of the eye socket, and then drag it in, down to the lash line, and blend it out. Just like that. And I'm grabbing more of the colour, tapping it off, and just lightly coating the entire eyelid. Blending that together. Okay, we're back. Sorry, the memory card filled up and my hair was a bit tight, so I took my hair out. So we just finished with saddle on the eyelids, and now I'm going to apply the same bronzer that we used to contour the socket of the eye under on the bottom waterline, or lash line, sorry. Just to provide it a bit of extra definition. I like adding on top of my nude eyeshadows, I like adding a bit of highlight or just something reflective on my eyelids um, to really brighten the eye and one I've been loving is by Ilia and it's from the Ilia Warm Nude The Necessary Eyeshadow Palette. It's a brilliant palette. It has all of the basics. I'm not sure if you can see it. So I just grab a little highlighter shade. I'm going to use Cocoon from this Ilia palette and pop it on the insides of the eyes there and blend it out with another finger and I'm just going to pick up a little bit on my finger as well and apply it in the center of the eyelid just to make it pop a little and just brighten up that eye I just love the sheen it adds So now that we have that done, I'm going to curl my lashes and this is probably one of my most favorite parts of my makeup routine or even after I've just moisturized and come out of the shower, I really enjoy um, curling my lashes because it makes me feel awake. Um, and an eyelash curler that I have loved, I've used so many, but I love the Surat eyelash curler. I just think it has enough give. It's perfect. It doesn't make my eyes crimp or crease. It's great. So I like taking my lash curler quite close to my eyelid but not too close. Clamping and then just a bit of a tilt upwards. We can see that it's really bright into the eye. So I used to have really fine lashes from the days of having eyelash extensions and I went in full knowing that I was going to lose lashes and they were going to become sparse but I had the courage and confidence that I will grow them back and I did. 
I don't tend to have much problem growing hair um, so I didn't think this would be any exception and with the help of a few serums I got my lashes back and now they're back to being long and quite thick. Um, I will again do a separate video on all my hair products and what I use for lashes, brows, um, my hair um, and talk through I guess the serum I use. So in terms of mascara I love a full volume mascara that's also separating and lengthening and that's a lot to ask for in a mascara I know but um, because I do have a combination of fine hairs as well as long thick hairs my brows do clump really easy um, so I was looking for a mascara that would do all of those things and not clump my lashes now using better than sex by Too Faced, uh, which is one of my favorite mascaras, was I guess the fail safe for me. I knew how much to apply and would stop when it would start clumping, but it would still provide that depth and color and also that thickness. But um, it's just not been working for me lately. And I don't know if my lashes have changed or what's happened, but it just goes to clumping straight away. So then I landed this mascara by MAC. It's in Extreme Dimension 3D Black Lash, and it is brilliant. Um, this mascara has a plastic mascara applicator and with really fine sort of spikes to really comb through the lashes so I do feel like my lashes are combed out but also a good amount of product gets applied across the lashes so we're going to go in with this guy. I like starting at the bottom um, of the lashes and applying a bit of product there and working my way up. Now we will see by the end of this video that my lashes will be weighted down from the mascara. That's just really when I apply any mascara it happens. Um, but to avoid that I like applying a lot less product on the edges and more on the roots. Don't forget the edges. The corner lashes are important. There we go. That's one lash I have done. Okay, so that's top lashes done. I'm going to apply the same mascara um, in the bottom lashes as well. I'll just go quite light. That's mascara and lashes done. I'm not going to apply false lashes. Um, definitely not for a day-to-day -day makeup and something where I just want to feel put together. I just like, just mascara is fine. Um, with lashes more broadly, I'm not particularly good at applying lashes on myself. I'm comfortable at applying them on anyone else, but there's something about applying lashes on myself that I can't do. I would love to master it one day, but today is not the day. Next, I'm going to go in with the rest of the face. So I'm going to start with bronzer and we're going to use the same Fenty Beauty bronzer that we used on the eyes. And I like grabbing that on either a contour brush or a powder brush or just a bronzer brush. This one was by Mecca Maxima and it has faded out. And I can't see what it's called, but really you can use any brush that suits you. I don't like sucking in my cheekbones because I feel like my cheekbones start rather low. Um, it just makes the top part of my face look even larger than it already is. So I like to just mimic my cheekbone. Tapping off any excess. And again, because our concealer was pretty light, my blemishes do show through, but I don't mind. It adds a bit of dimension and shadow to my cheekbone and my flawed spots come through. Of course you can conceal them if you'd like to, which I would on a more full coverage day, but today is okay. And then of course on the tops of your forehead, just to carry that warmth throughout the face. And I like grabbing a bit more on the brush, pinching it, and applying it down my nose. Oops, hair's a mess.
and then anything else on top. So now the bronze is done, I like going in with my highlighter. Now we have applied quite a few powdered products, so I like going in with a cream product just to make the face glow again and feel youthful. Again, at this point in time, if you feel like you do need to go back in with some more powder in your T-zone or anywhere else, you can go ahead and do that. So I am grabbing this MAC highlighter. Now it is super old, um, well this particular product in my collection is super old, so I will find the product and link it down in the description, but it is my favorite. It's a highlight shade, very nice thick cream. As you can see, I've hit pan. Um, but just works really lovely on the face and I just grab it with my finger dab it on top of my cheekbones like that a bit in on the brow bone under the brow on the other side under the brow bone whatever's left down the bridge of the nose, on your cupid bow if you'd like, forehead and chin. Again, this is a lot of, these are a lot of places to add your highlight. I just like how the light touches these parts of my face, but of course you can add it wherever you want it. Now I'm going to go in with a cream blush. Now this one's by Stilla. Again, if I had to take one or two products with me this would be one of them I love it I use it on my lips I use it as eyeshadow I use it on my cheeks and I do use this every single day this product if nothing else I'll wear sunscreen with a bit of this product and some mascara and I'll be done it's great this is the convertible color by Stila again the colors rubbed off so I will link the, the product down in the description box for you but I also grab this on my finger and just dab and again, this product will marry together that cream highlight with your powdered bronzer really well and just lighten and liven it all up. Once I've popped some of the apples of my cheeks, I love taking it out up where we've applied the bronzer. And I actually like applying some on my nose. I like that sun blush flushed look. Because it is a cream product, it's very forgiving. and just adds a youthful glow. Okay, so that's face. I do do this last, and I don't know why, but it's setting my brows. And I like to set my brows with the Benefit Their Real Tinted Primer. Now, this tinted primer is great for your lashes, um, you know, or if you just want to wear it by itself as well. You can use it as a primer for your lashes, under your mascara, or wear it by itself. But I like to pop it on my brows. It is a bit unconventional. I mean, I don't know if you could use it like that, but I do. And I've gotten through three tubes of this stuff. I love it. So just brushing my hairs up like so. And I think for me, applying this product last is just a psychological thing. I like to think that, you know, through combing my brushes, my brows up, I am combing out any of the excess fallen product on my brows or whatever it is. It might be, again, a very irrational thing, but I love doing it. It makes me feel like I've just finished the look. So brushing those brows up. Okay, so that's everything. I'm just going to pop a gloss on my lips of course you can go in with a lipstick and because it's such a beautiful glowy natural everyday look if you are going from a day to night thing you can just add a red lip and maybe something in the eyes or add some glitter or maybe a darker shadow um, on the ends but I like to go in with my favorite all-time favorite lip gloss it's the Bare Minerals Tantalize Gloss in Brilliant And this is the look. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you've learned a couple of things or you've just discovered new products, but it's a perfect 
every day get myself together or start my working from home day. It feels comfortable, it feels fresh. I hope you enjoy it too. We'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.